human health and animal health and ecosystem health, they're all connected. And if you don't have healthy ecosystems or healthy animals, you won't have healthy people. We have the saying, we got to save the planet. You know, the planet itself is going to be okay. It's, gonna, it's really the people. We got to save ourselves. We got to save our human society, our human civilization. That is what I think is potentially at risk. I'm so curious to understand the motivation behind internews and why uh, you're so keen in pushing this idea of supporting journalists, and especially science and environment journalists. Well, um, it's basically because environmental journalism is so important to, for, to inform people, the public, policymakers, local communities about, you know, why, why we need a healthy environment, uh, not just for animals, but for ourselves, for, for humans, for people, for our communities and our families. Speaking from my personal experience, uh, I was a journalist uh, for, for over a decade, uh, for over 10 years working in Asia, in Southeast Asia. I was based in Thailand, working for a local newspaper and a TV station. And uh, I got to see firsthand really how important, uh, you know, the media is to uh, explain environmental issues to the public uh, and to help the public and policymakers make good informed decisions. And uh, we, I saw time and again how the media played an important role in, in, in a lot of these crucial decisions. And, um, and so, uh, when I joined with Internews in 2004 to set up the environmental media program, which we call the Earth Journalism Network, because we know this is going to be an ever more important topic as time goes on. And we've certainly seen that as, as it's become ever clearer, for instance, that the crisis of climate change, the crisis of biodiversity loss can, you know, gets worse and worse. So uh, and many, and many other, the health crisis generated from environmental uh, problems, uh, as we've seen through the, the pandemic, uh, the COVID pandemic. I mean, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's always been important to cover environmental journalism, but I think it's becoming more clear every day and every year. For a journalist, you have to get trained every other time, especially when it comes to issues like environment and science, because Come on, you're not scientists. Some of us aren't, right? How have you seen the progress so far from working with us? Uh, I've seen tremendous progress. Um, you know, um, I, I can't speak just for Africa, but, you know, but also in Africa, you know, when I started out, it's, you know, uh, it seemed like the environment was kind of, how should I say, a back page story. And maybe it was, it was a story just about, you know, animals and but now over the years we you know we see much better coverage about how protecting the environment protecting wildlife actually helps protect us humans people and our communities and our well-being as well and uh, how, how important environmental issue is to the economy and to health and to security uh, so we've seen um, you know environmental stories go from back page issues or you know not considered as important by the media to becoming front page stories more than it used to be and i think that's true for africa and many other places as well what is the danger of not following up on this conversation and adapting to these sustainable practices you know i'm sorry to say it could really damage or even destroy our human civilization i think it's that serious we built our current civilization uh, uh, over the last 10,000 years uh, in a pretty stable climate with very stable sea levels and stable, you know, rainfall patterns, relatively stable temperatures and seasons and all these things that we are used to with our farming practices, with our, you know, our urban settlements and our, you know, our coastal uh, living and so on. And um, 
all those things are going to ch are changing now and that's going to have a huge impact and everyone is going to need to adapt uh rich and poor city or country um and if we don't adapt if we if we continue to make the situation worse as we're we're doing if we cannot find a way to to uh, protect our climate and protect biodiversity and other natural resources for the long term then you know the risks are really severe i really you know we can it could generate a lot of conflict it can generate you know huge food insecurity loss of livelihoods uh and as those things you know uh accelerate uh it generates uh again conflicts and you know we've seen situations in parts of the world including perhaps uh, you know, the Horn of Africa, not far from Kenya, uh, or maybe even in Kenya itself, where, you know, it generates conflict that can cause society to break down. And we don't know how, how serious it can get, but it looks like it could be really serious. Now, people say, we have the saying, we got to save the planet. You know, the planet itself is going to be okay it's going to, it's really the people we got to save ourselves we got to save our human society our human civilization that is what i think is potentially at risk what do you think it's important for us to have the support all of us as champions of conservation to have support system yeah it's important because environmental issues they cross national boundaries i mean they you know it's that simple and uh, the issues that we're facing can't be solved or even understood by looking at just one country or even just one community or ecosystem you know uh if you look at the issues we're facing uh these are collective problems uh, in situations like climate change that's you know it's it, we're talking about our atmosphere and our ocean which are you know which uh, connect all of us so um <laughs> it's more important as as these issues become more global and more severe it's more important than ever that we be able to communicate and and work together across national boundaries we know that's not always easy um but there's so many examples just in east africa of how how crucial it is um for for journalists to be able to work together across you know in different countries what do you think are some emerging trends that probably we are the journalist of the environment and science should be watching? Well, there are so many emerging trends, but I think clearly one of the, the new ones is our, is our understanding of how environment and health are so connected. Um, and again, the COVID-19 pandemic is a perfect example. We now know that it probably emerged out of a, you know, a wildlife market in China we 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 believe that uh the way the way that while the animals in the market were were handled probably contributed to the 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 origin of the pandemic but it's not just that place it's you know we have problems all over the world with the way that uh we we interact with uh not just wildlife but also domestic livestock and you know farm animals as well there is this new trend, what we call One Health, which is that we understand now that human health and animal health and ecosystem health, they're all connected. And if you don't have healthy ecosystems or healthy animals, you won't have healthy people. Pay more attention and take better care of animals and ecosystems, not just for their own sake, but for our well-being too. For our environmental pro media program, the Earth Journalism Network, um, we've always uh, worked, to a small extent at least, with East African journalists and media outlets. But over the last four years, I'm pleased to say, we've been able to uh, carry out a larger project, a more dedicated project on East Africa wildlife and conservation journalism. And we've been able to build a team a uh, small team in East Africa that works with journalists and media outlets in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania to advance 
uh, environmental journalism. We have a lot of activities that may that are to support journalists and media outlets working on these topics. Uh, so we have lots of training workshops. As you noted, it's so important. These comp these topics are very complicated. The science can be tricky to understand, and it's always you know you need to update all the time. So. Um, so training, capacity building of journalists is really important. But we also give direct support to journalists who are interested in certain stories, whether it's about wildlife trafficking or climate change or One Health um, or other environmental topics if we can. And we also work with local media outlets, um, you know, who are doing excellent and, uh, you know, excellent work on uncovering all kinds of stories related to environment and wildlife. So, um, you know, if you have journalists out there, definitely check out our website or anyone can check out our website at earthjournalism.net. Um, we, you know, journalists who are interested are able to sign up for free. They can register for free, become members. We have these uh, uh, groups, discussion groups, EJNet and Ocean Journalism Network you're familiar with. Um, that's a way for journalists to exchange and communicate with other journalists all over the world uh, on a daily basis. And uh, we also have social media channels that, you know, on Facebook and Twitter and that uh, and Instagram, LinkedIn that uh, you can join and follow. So we've got new stories all the time and certainly encourage everyone to check them out and to, and if, and for, for journalists who are interested, please come and join us. Anything that probably Evans touched on you would like to finish with? In general, we all need to think about our impacts on, on the environment and on and communities and health and think about the long term. It can be hard, as you say, sometimes to make changes now that are difficult, but, but will help us in the future. So that's the challenge for all of us. But I guess uh, the main message I say is, you know, just stay informed, you know. Uh, there's lots of good information out there. Uh, if you're a journalist, keep producing that good information, keep educating yourself, and we all need to, to watch or read the news and, or, and, and keep track of the science and latest developments and un trying to understand what is our impact on the world around us, what is the impact of the environment on, on us, and, and, and how we can, in our, our own way, help to, uh, you know, make, make the world a more livable place, whether that's not just through our own actions, but also through the products that we buy, through the way we live our lives, through the, um, through the politicians we support, you know, when we, when we vote. Um, so there's lots of different ways that we can all have impact and for our own, for our own well-being and that of our families. You know, we just need to keep informed, and hopefully, EGN can be a part of that and help in keeping people informed. Yeah, thank you so much, James, for making time for us. I'm hoping when you come to Kenya one of these days, we can meet in our studio, not in our home place, actually, so that you can have a feel of uh, what Cast Media Group is all about. Thank you. That would be great. I I had the pleasure of visiting Kenya a couple times late last time in 2019. I hope to get there again, of course, uh, a it's pandemic a, permitting. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before you leave, do you mind if I teach you one word of Kalenzin language? Please. So when you want to say goodbye, you say Sai Sere. Sai Sere. Yeah. So I'm going to say Kongoi Missing. Sai Sere. Sai Sere. So I'm saying thank, thank you, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>